Well, good evening and thanks for joining us tonight here on News 20 on GTN. We've got a fabulous show for you tonight. Joining me to my right, we have Bill Young, the president and CEO of the Annie Malone Children and Family Service Center. Glad you could join us. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure to be here and thank you very much for having us. About 30 days on the job so far you were talking about. How's it been? Uh, it's been hectic. <laughs> um, I can imagine you walked in at a time right before a big event. Yeah, we, we've got two events coming up that are going to be just very perfect for the community, but it takes a lot of work. A lot of people don't understand that behind, uh, especially our signature event, which is the Annie Malone Parade, which will be May the 17th uh, on Market Street, that there's a lot, a lot of work that has to go behind. Uh, we'll probably have over a hundred entries in there. So the logistics and the permits and all those things are, uh, are kind of hectic to get everything going. Let's talk a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are. Um, we talked before we went on the air. One thing that you've noticed so far after about 30 days is the passion of the individuals that work and volunteer for Annie Malone. And with my dealings for 20 years now with the organization, I see the exact same thing. It's got to make you feel proud with your passion to walk into something where you have a group behind you that feel exactly the same. Right. I've always kind of had an affinity to children. I, I, I like children. I've got children. Uh, uh, my nuclear family is, you know, I'm always tied to the kids. Uh, my background is finance and management, and uh, I started. 30 plus days ago and was asked to come to see if we could steer our organization into the next millennium. So we're looking at uh, building better infrastructure, being able to deliver our services more effectively and, and, effective, and efficiently, as well as to tell the story of what Annie Malone really does, because a lot of people don't have the real knowledge of the, the services that we provide to the community. They still have uh, the historical feel that Annie Malone, which started as an orphanage, that somehow we still do that. Well, that is what I was going to ask you next, is that things have changed since Annie Malone was originated to where it is now. As you step into this position and you look under your leadership, what are some of the things that you want to try to get across to the community about what you guys do and what you foresee for the future? The first thing, we are the safety net uh, for St. Louis. We take the bottom type people that need the most kind of assistance, especially the children, and we provide, provide a safe and healthy place for them to reside on a short-term basis while, crisis, while they're in crisis. So there's some programs that I'd like to just kind of do a laundry list, sure. of, you know, a, short term you have to remember stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first service that we provide is a short term crisis service. Uh, this are when children are in crisis short term basis, uh, either the police bring them or a family member brings them. We provide a 24 hour uh, safety net to provide to make sure that they're safe until a disposition of where they need to go next. We have another component of that which is a longer uh, term uh, crisis uh, ho housing for, for children from infancy to about 16 years old. And uh, we work with the courts. So children that are in, a, in a, a situation that is not comfortable for them, there might be child abuse, uh, incarceration of the family, a lot of uh, things that could put them in crisis. And we actually uh, have residential 24-hour care for them. Uh, we also provide services for uh, people that, for example, um, we had a mother that was, uh, uh, had some surgery that she had to do. She had three children and no family to help her, and we were able to assist her while she was in the hospital. So we have that, that kind of services that are available. We also have a therapeutic school called the Emerson Academy of where we take children from St. Louis public schools who have either disabilities, autism, a Down syndrome, or behavior, severe, uh, behavior problems, where we offer therapeutic education services for them. And we provide all kinds of counseling and things like that. So they're with us during, during the day. Then the next thing that we do, as you can see, there's a laundry list of, of things that we do that people might not recognize that we do. Uh, we have a transitional living program for girls where we provide uh, uh, 
uh, living as well as counseling and life skills training so they can survive as adults. And those children are usually from 16 to 21. Um, that's a very interesting population because either they, will, they are homeless or they are children that are coming out of the foster care system. Because when, when young ladies get to be about 16, 17 and beginning to think about their independence, uh, sometimes there's some friction that occurs. And so this is a safe place for them so they can learn how to be adults, so they can complete their GEDs if, if, if required. They can go to college and we provide all those kinds of things. And it's a beautiful facility. They learn how to cook, they learn how to clean, they know how to learn how to do all those life skills that will make them productive adults. It's such a fragile time. We talked about before we went on the air about children, no matter whether they're one or they're in that 16, 17 year old range, such a fragile time as you grow up. And this mentoring and this behind the scenes support that Annie Malone has been able to give thousands and thousands of kids here in the St. Louis area and push them on to success is unbelievable. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it's amazing the tradition that has been in existence and has passed on. So there are a lot of adults that have uh, really received the services that have been the foundation of successful lives. Uh, we have staff members that uh, at one time were residents in the orphanage uh, housing situation that Annie Malone used to be in the business of who now are productive staff members for me as well as productive people in the community and it's so heartwarming when I have an opportunity to meet those people and they tell me how much the, the tradition and the learning lessons that they had from Annie Malone have made them what they are today. And a mentor of my own, a good friend of mine in his late 70s mm -hmm. and he was in uh, the Annie Malone system growing up and been on the board and all kinds of various positions with Annie Malone and talked so highly of it and mm -hmm. has passed so many things on and mentored me and not just you know life but marriage and with my kids and just overall how I conduct myself as a business person. Yeah well we had a real wonderful experience last week. Uh, for four days we had a hundred children, no, I'll say a hundred young adults, I won't call them children, uh, from Howard University who came to St. Louis for an alternative spring break. And they came to our facility on 2612 Annie Malone Drive to help us do some renovation work, uh, cleaning, all those things. It was a wonderful experience in having them work enthusiastically and hard. Uh, they're jovial college students, but they gave up their spring break to do something meaningful. So we had an opportunity to kind of talk to them about the history of Annie Malone. And one of the facts uh, about Annie Malone, who was a fabulous uh, person, who is one of the real unsung heroes in St. Louis, uh, she was very philanthropic. And she gave money to almost all of the historically black colleges, land-grant colleges in the United States. But one of the major donors that she, uh, one of the major donations she made was $25,000 as Howard was being started. So that really just opened up the kids and, and I think we have a real affinity. We, we've asked them to come back again next year and it was really a tremendous opportunity to kind of tell the Annie Malone story, to tell them the services that we provide and to make a connect. Now I know you are very successful in your career leading up to where you are now. How does it make you feel personally? I know only 30 days in, but I can tell already you're so connected to this and the future of what's going to um, happen under your leadership. But um, how does it make you feel to go home at night and know that you know I'm affecting hundreds, thousands of lives every day now? Well, I've, I've always kind of run a parallel life in my personal and in my uh, professional career. I've always been involved in the community. I served on many boards. I was chair of the board of the Urban League. So I've, I've got a connection to community service. It means a lot to me. Uh, but it's just a story. The first day that I showed up on the job, um, uh, we had just gotten a small child, about a three-month-old little boy, the most gorgeous little boy you ever saw in your life, with, a, with some brown eyes. I've never seen the brown eyes like that. He was sipping on a bottle, had a pretty smile on him had a broken leg and cracked ribs. I, I almost cried. 
And then I said, well, I'm hooked. <laughs> so uh, I make it, I'm, I'm at that unit all the time. I walk through there, I bring people through there, and it just reinforces the importance of what I do. Uh, it gives me a chance to see some visioning of where we are now and where we need to be. Um, so I, that's why I say I'm building, trying to build the infrastructure to make sure that our services are there. Uh, to the staff, um, uh, and, and when you're helping people, you kind of have a, uh, a social service mentality of I'm a help, I'm a help, I'm a help. But what we're talking about now as far as what the visioning of, of uh, Annie Malone, we are now a customer service organization and our customers are our children. So that's the kind of spirit that we're building. Uh, that's the thing that we're using to build toward the future and we're making some changes and there are gonna be some changes that we think that will improve that service to children. I mentioned before helping hundreds and thousands and hopefully along the way, everybody, mm -hmm. but really the stories come down to those one kid here, one kid here. If you can change the life of one kid, you've done a life's work within itself right there. You, you never know who and how you will affect for people. Uh, over the years, as I said, I've been involved in a lot of things and um, young people that I dealt with 30 years ago who are now adults and have their own families. I can remember about three months ago, I was at uh, the bank up in uh, University City and there were two gentlemen sitting, standing out talking and I said, wait a minute, I remember you, <laughs> you're Mr. Young and you told me such and such and such. So you never know how you affect people. Um, uh, I always try to tell everybody, you always say please and thank you. All of those old things that came from generations ago are still applicable now. And caring for other people is one of those things that I think more people need to do uh, in society in general, and especially in St. Louis. What would you say to individuals out there, whether they're uh, in the youth range or adults that are having maybe some troubles and they need somewhere, you know, like you had mentioned before, for the kid to stay for a couple of days or whatever, what, what do you say to them? Because that first, that first step, that call, that driving up to the door, that's the hardest part. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it takes a lot of courage to transfer the care of a loved one to someone else. Uh, first, you got to recognize you got a problem. Uh, second, uh, you have to be able to have the resources to kind of reach out and ask, you know, because a lot of times uh, people get in a hole and they say, well, I can, I, I can solve it, I can solve it, and they can't. So they just need to reach out. As I say, we are a safety net organization for children, and when people have troubles, they need to ask. Uh, social workers know to refer, the courts refer children, and we have people that call constantly every day I've got a situation can you help me and we try not to not to unless we're over capacity we try never to turn a child away let's uh, jump back a little bit and talk about um, Annie Malone herself mm -hmm. a, a very historical story as you mentioned doesn't get enough press and she did so much for the St. Louis area the Ville neighborhood and, and, and the community uh, she was a genius okay she was a genius um, born in 1869, uh, uh, came to St. Louis in 1902. Uh, she had developed uh, hair care products uh, for African American women that did not call, cause damage to the hair. Uh, the other, the old formulas had lye and all other kinds of things in it. But she was a brilliant woman. She just, she developed as those products. But the thing that's most amazing is her, the way she developed her business. Mary Kay and Avon, their distribution system, Annie Malone in the early 20s had 75,000 women, most of them college graduates, who were selling her hair care products door to door. That's fabulous. That ought to go in, they ought to teach that at uh, Warshu and St. Louis U Business Schools. But she was a very philanthropic person, uh, she gave money to many, many places. She built the Poor Old College, which is, uh, uh, doesn't exist anymore, but it was an institution that she built that did a many things. It had laboratories in it. It had a theater in it. It had meeting rooms. She sublet uh, office space for smaller companies that didn't have office space. And on the top of the Poor Old uh, 
college in DeVille. She even had a rooftop garden. Now that's the latest thing now, but this was in the 1920s. She was way before her time. And uh, as I say, it's, a, it's an untold, one of many untold stories about successful African Americans who came from St. Louis. Most people know when they hear Annie Malone, the first thing they think of is the May Day Parade. How do you, as president and CEO, start to bridge that gap, as we talked about earlier in the show, to the average individual who that's what they think of when they hear that, mm -hmm. to bridge that gap of really starting to learn and understand about your services? Well, it, it is a situation that just because of tradition, uh, and because of the transformation of the services, um, the, the message had not been driven. So from now until May the 17th, all hands are on deck, and uh, it is my responsibility, and I think uh, responsibility to the community to make sure that people understand what we do. We're a vital safety net for children, and uh, uh, that those children are our most precious uh, uh, asset. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to do a lot of shows like yours, <laughs> I'm going to be on the radio, I'm going to be everywhere, and I'm going to try to use uh, the gift of gab that I have to communicate uh, and tell the Annie Malone story because it's a very, very uh, important story. There's, th there's three kind of uh, people that are going to come to that parade. They're the parade people that, like you, have had 20, 30 years worth of uh, historic experience and they come and they have fun. Um, then that's a group between 18 and about 45 who probably have no clue about what we do. And then there's, there are going to be kids there. And kids need to see the positive role models that I hope that we will present as the units that are there. We're trying to attract a lot of young people uh, to participate in the parade. So maybe one of those young people that are sitting there will see somebody say, i like to be like him. So that's what we're pushing. Uh, that's what we're going to communicate and uh, I probably won't have a voice af until after May 17th. <laughs> what about, this is, uh, the channel is shown all over St. Louis. Um, are, as far as the center itself, are there any requirements, um, like residency requirements, um, as far as being able to be involved with the center? Uh, no, we, we service the community. Uh, and we, we have children from uh, the cities, from the county, we have all ethnicities. Uh, we've had Bosnians, Hispanics, uh, really a, a multicultural. So we help everybody, uh, even though it is, is a historical and uh, African American organization. We are here to service kids throughout the community. What would you say to individuals about um, wanting to get involved on a volunteer basis? Because I know when I came down to the center and was there and walked around, you really get a feel and a sense for how much of a difference you can make. Uh, we love volunteers. Uh, we can, you know, we don't have unlimited budgets, but we have a lot of stuff that people can do. Uh, we encourage it. We've had people that donate. Uh, uh, Target, Walmart are very, very generous to us in giving us products or services that we, we need to do to, to pass on to the children. Uh, we are a real hub. We're one of the real hubs in the Ville area, and we have two facilities. We have the facility 2612 Annie Malone Drive, which is in the Ville, and then we have another uh, facility on Page that has our, our services where we uh, provide the safety net services for, for our children and our educational program. So we've got two facilities. We're always looking for something. Uh, I've had people uh, volunteering, bringing, you know, donating things, which we can always use. Uh, but we need bodies every once in a while. So don't be scared to call us at 314-531-0120. And we'll put that information, the website and the phone number up periodically throughout the show. So you can uh, call and find out any more information that you need, or you can simply go on the website, a wonderful website. It's got a lot of information on there. But May 17th, we'll talk more about that next month when you come on the show again. But um, it's coming up just around the corner. Be here before you know it. Yeah, we have really kind of two events. On May the 2nd, we have uh, an ice cream social that is uh, going to be held at our facility on Annie Malone Drive. It's free to the community. 
uh, it's a great time to kind of, hopefully the weather will be great and uh, it'll be a fun time. We'll have bouncy houses, all those kinds of things. That's kind of the lead up to uh, May the 17th. And we will run from uh, basically where Harris Stowe State University is, uh, eastward down market uh, to 7th Street and uh, it'll be a great fun day. As I say, we anticipate that there's going to be uh, a lot of dignitaries that'll be there. Uh, we're reaching out to the community. We have a lot of people that have participated historically in the parade, but it'll be a fun day and we really are encouraging everybody from the whole metropolitan area to come and enjoy, enjoy and uh, partake in the parade festivities. And anybody interested in being in the parade, they can simply go to the website and find out how they can sign up and get involved in this. We're, re we're looking for people. We want more people. We want positive people. We want uh, uh, good images in the community to, to participate in the parade. And we always are looking for friends. And uh, if you dial our number, I'm sure that we can accommodate you. To kind of jump back, if anybody's just joining us right now, we have Bill Young, the president and CEO of the Annie Malone Children and Family Service Center with us here. Um, let's kind of step back again and touch on that, um, the services that you provide right now for mm -hmm. uh, individuals in need. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I use the word safety net because that's exactly what we are. The, the crisis programs on a short-term basis um, we, you know, if, if there's a situation in a home or something, the police know that they can bring, it, bring a child to us and we will provide that safe coverage for that child. We have a longer term uh, crisis uh, unit where children can stay up to 45 uh, days uh, that referrals normally come from the court system where there's some issues in a family where a child needs a protective uh, custody. Our therapeutic uh, uh, school, the Emerson Academy, is designed to help those children that need the most help. They, they have behavior problems, they have uh, disabilities, uh, uh, and it's a really a wonderful situation. Uh, we were, we were uh, walking through the other day with our, our uh, Grand Marshal for the parade, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and you really had a, a, a good feel for those children and how much they care when they see somebody else, a volunteer, come in the room. It's, it's like it's a breath of fresh air. Our transitional living program, uh, designed for women from 16 to 21, helps them grow up and get the skill set so they can provide it for themselves in, 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 in the future. Uh, so we do a lot of good things in the community that unfortunately people still think on a historical basis we, we were doing what we were doing back in, in, when it was uh, started in 1888. After your tour, though, of all these radio shows and TV shows, everybody's going to know exactly what you're, Absolutely. what you're up to these days, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And one of the things that, that I'd like to kind of talk about, you know, when you have a parade, you need to have a star. And uh, we just got confirmation. Our star this year, the Grand Marshal, is going to be Captain Ron Johnson from this Highway Patrol. Uh, he was one of the real bright stars in, in the difficulties that we've had in, in the community. He's a tremendous person. He has a connection with children and what we do. And we think that it's appropriate to highlight the positive nature of, of things that have happened uh, in all the turmoil that has been in existence for the last nine months. You talked earlier in the show and you talked about Captain Johnson being that, that role model. Do you see yourself as a role model? I'm, I try to be humble, but I have a lot of people that I've touched over the, the years and it's very heartwarming for me uh, for somebody to come up and tell me a story of, of something I said or, or something that I helped them do. Uh, it's just in my nature. I try to help people. Um, you know, I, I, that's just me. Uh, I don't look for the acknowledgement. I, I, I really kind of shun away from it, except for when I have to, to come on a TV show and, and talk about the great things of Annie Malone. Uh, but, uh, you know, people are important. And if you don't give, you don't get. And I've gotten a lot more back from people that I've had association with than I've ever given. So uh, I continue, will, will continue to try to give. I try to take some of my experience and, and uh, background in, in trying to make Annie Lamone a, a 2025 better uh, institution in serving children. 
The one thing through volunteering that I always try to tell individuals if they're thinking about whether to do it or whether not to do it is that the simple things like a smile on a child's face or to see somebody just uh, a kid laughing and having fun that can be you know worth all the money in the world. Oh, absolutely and you never know you know even a front uh, just a good example uh, there was a young man in our Emerson Academy and you know, typical young man with his pants down. I just called him over and said, hey, uh, why don't you pull your pants up? And he immediately pulled them up. And he walked around, and I was still in the building, and he came back and he saw me, he said, my pants are up. You never know what kind of, even small things, will last a lifetime in somebody's life. And from a volunteer perspective, you never know. And what will happen is as you volunteer and you open up yourself to give, I guarantee that you'll get back more than you give. One more time before we wrap up the show here. 30 minutes goes very fast. As we mentioned, we could go two hours here. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to having you back <laughs> at the beginning of May. But let's run through the Andy Malone uh, dates, the May 17th, the May 2nd. Let's walk them through all that as we okay. wrap up. May 2nd is our annual ice cream social that will be held at our facility, 2612 Andy Malone Drive in the Ville. Uh, it's a fun day for uh, kids in the neighborhood come join us. The big signature day is May the 17th, our parade that will go eastward on uh, uh, Market Street uh, starts at 1 o'clock. Uh, we are still looking for participants, but we more, more importantly, we want the community to come out and enjoy uh, a tradition that's been going on for over 105 consecutive years. Well, Bill, we appreciate your time here Thank on the you. show. Look forward to a long relationship with you and the best of luck with everything you do. I know you're only 30 days in, but uh, you're heading in the right direction. Thank you so much. All right. Once again, Bill Young, the president and CEO of the Annie Malone Children and Family Service Center. Once again, May 17th, the date of the big parade. Make sure you're out there. It's going to be a great time. We'll have our float in the parade. We're in there. We've been in there every year. We look forward to it. We mark it as soon as the... One year is over. We put it on the calendar for the next year. That's, that's what we're going to do. It's a lot of fun. We'll okay. see you down there. Have a great night. And we'll have Bill on uh, next month once again here on the show. Thanks for joining us tonight here on News 20 on GTN. Have a great evening. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, For giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion. Excuse me, may I go into that room, please? Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. When Americans volunteer to serve their country, their country promises to take care of them when they come home. After 26 years in the military, 
James Minor suffered a paralyzing injury that changed not only his life, but his wife's. My role as a caregiver, it's a 24 hour, seven days a week, there's no breaks. Having a spinal cord injury is not like you just hurt your back. Everything is a challenge. Simple day-to-day -day living requires enormous assistance. Spinal cord injured veterans are dependent upon the VA for their health care and benefits. Getting them can be an overwhelming process. Paralyzed Veterans of America has been fighting for over 60 years to make sure our veterans get all the benefits they deserve. We know exactly what to do, exactly what the VA needs in order to grant a claim. They're committed not just to my husband as an individual, they're committed to our family. Help us help America's veterans. Visit pva.org.